Mm, what up, what up? Welcome to the Chapter 7 Review, or Topic 7, if you're using Envision Algebra 1 Common Core. This is the stuff that talks about foiling, factoring, multiplying, adding, subtracting polynomials. So let's just get right into it. Simplify in standard form and name. So, in this case, simplifying means combining like terms. If you have nothing in front of a group of parentheses, you don't need them. So I'm just going to get that uh, group of parentheses like a baseball player who just struck out out of here. <laughs> if you have nothing but a plus sign in front of a group of parentheses, the parentheses also don't matter. So plus, negative, all right, looks sloppy, but it's there, can't change it. Minus 14k squared, minus 8 now is the time where we can combine like terms. So is there anything like negative 4k to the fourth? Yeah, negative 3k to the fourth. Now, if you're wondering why did I choose the k to the fourth as my first thing to combine, if we're writing in standard form, you're looking for the highest degree. Degree is dependent on the exponent attached to your variable. K to the fourth is larger than any variable exponent combination uh, than what you see here. So I'm putting that first. Where did I get the negative seven from? Negative four plus negative three is negative seven. So the K to the fourth has come along for the ride. Uh, what's next in my K order? There's no K cubed, but there is a K squared. So positive three K squared take away 14 K squared is going to be negative 11 K squared. Subtract the coefficients, keep the variable exponent combination the same. Uh, now we have 14 and negative 8. Uh, they combine to make 6. So that is in standard form, k to the fourth k squared 6. This is a quartic because it's something to the fourth power as its largest degree. So quartic uh, trinomial because there's three terms. Okay, one term is monomial, two terms is binomial, three terms is trinomial. Uh, if there's no variable, if the largest is a constant, then it's a constant. Then k to the first is linear, k squared is quadratic, k to the third would be cubic, k to the fourth is quartic. And if you they, anybody ever asks k to the fifth is quintic, um, I don't think algebra one cares about quintic, but now you know, quintic. Not to be confused with Quintin, which is a uh, name of a student I taught back in the day. Actually, several students named Quintin. It's a strong name, starts with a Q. Uh, all right, mm. nothing in front of the parentheses, don't need them. Seven minus 13 X cubed minus 11 X. Ooh, a negative inside of the parentheses. That process is called distributing the negative. So negative two X cubed is negative two X cubed. Negative times positive eight is negative eight. Negative negative four X to the fifth is positive four X to the fifth. Basically when you distribute a negative, you just flip the signs inside the parentheses and that's exactly what I did. Now time to combine. I see a fifth over here, four X to the fifth. You don't combine with anything, so I'll put you way out here, four X to the fifth. This is me writing it in standard form. Uh, what's next, what's next? Maybe I should do different colors. Uh, X to the third, no X to the fourth, so X to the third, negative 13 X to the third, minus two X to the third, negative 13 minus two is negative 15, and X to the third comes along for the ride. Uh, negative 11 X is all on its own. And I'll just combine seven and negative eight to make negative one. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four terms. So we really in algebra one don't have a name for a four term. So we say four term. And then fifth is a quintic. But in Algebra 1, usually would say five degree, four term polynomial. But I'm going to put quintic here because I kept saying the word quintic in the last problem. And I don't, I, I don't want to change who I am. I don't want to change who I am. 
Okay. All right, multiply. So this is regular old distributive property. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. x times x is x squared. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. x times nothing is x. Pretty simple. These guys don't combine um, because one's an x squared and one's an x. Okay, regular old distributed property. This, however, is FOIL. Now, remember, FOIL is an acronym that stands for first, outer, inner, last. When you multiply a binomial to another binomial, you FOIL. Also, like a double distributed property thing. So 2n times 6n is 12n squared. That would be the F in FOIL, the first term in each parentheses. Then the O is the, <clears throat> is the outer terms in each parentheses. So 2n times 1 is 2n. Then the inner terms is 2 times 6n. So 2 times 6 is 12. n comes along for the ride. And then the L stands for the last term in each parentheses, the two is the last one, the one is the last one, two times one is two. More often than not with FOIL problems, you can probably combine like terms. There's nothing that combines with 12n squared, so 12n squared lives right there. 2n plus 12n is 14n. And two comes along for the ride. That's the FOIL property. I would say it's rock solid, but I guess if it's foil, it's more like metal solid. Because <laughs> cause it's foil. Now, a lot of people would look at this guy and say, oh, 4p times 4p is 16p squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. The answer is 16p squared plus 1. You're wrong. 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 This is a foil problem. The devil, you say. Uh, when you square something, you multiply something to itself. So when you square a parentheses, you multiply a parentheses to itself. And in this case, inside the parentheses, you've got 4p minus 1 and 4p minus 1. It's a FOIL problem. There's a specific name to this type of guy, and it's called a perfect square trinomial. Now, a perfect square is like 4 squared, which is 16. A perfect square trinomial is what you get when you multiply a binomial to itself. Okay, 4p times 4p, yeah, is 16p squared. 4p times negative 1 is negative 4p. Negative 1 times 4p is negative 4p again. That will always happen. The two middle guys will always be the same in perfect square trinomials. And negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. So I got the 16p squared right, and I got the plus 1 right. Oh, but this part I didn't get right. These two combine to make negative 8p, because negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. P comes along for the ride, plus 1 comes down, 16p squared comes down. Now, if you notice that it's a perfect square trinomial, the shortcut is multiply that guy to itself, four, 4 times 4 is 16, p times p is p squared. Multiply that guy to itself, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. The middle guy is always going to be u times u times 2. So 4p times negative 1, negative 4p, times 2, negative 8p. It's a shortcut. I could use it, but I didn't. Maybe it'll pop up later. I don't know. I do know. This is a problem that I like to call FOIL because there's more outers and inners. Probably more inners. But um, it's more than just a regular FOIL problem. It forces you to understand what FOIL actually means. And what FOIL actually means is you take the first term and you multiply that term to every term of the second parentheses. You take then that term, multiply it to every term in that set of parentheses. It's the extended version of FOIL. So 4 times, I'm sorry, 4a times 6a squared is 24a to the third. We're going to get creative with our colors. We're going to make a rainbow. 4a times negative a is negative 4a squared. 
Mm -hmm. It is. 4a times 2 is 8a. Mm -hmm. Now I go to the next term in the first parentheses. 2 times 6a squared is 12a squared. Uh, let's get a nice orange, a nice orange. 2 times negative a is negative 2a. And last but not least, a color that I didn't use yet. Uh, I did green, I did blue. How about like a, how about like a, a teal looking thing, like a nice dark teal. Uh, two times two is four. Now what we do is we combine like terms and that will usually be the case. I'm going to write this in standard form just like I did the first two problems. 24a cubed, there's nothing like it, so 24a cubed. Negative 4a squared can combine with 12a squared. 12 negative 4 makes positive 8. a squared comes along for the ride. 8a minus two a's is six a's because if I have eight apples and I subtract two apples, I have six apples. How about them? And if I have plus four, I have plus four. Now it's in standard form. And if I wanted to name it, it would be called a four term uh, cubic. So I named it. I went above and beyond. That boys and girls is multiplying. Factoring is a different animal. Now, factoring could mean one of several things in Algebra 1. And so far in this topic, factoring meant one of three, maybe four things. The first thing in factoring is see if there's a common factor that you can pull out. If so, or if not, then factor could be like that sometimes method, like a defoil method. Um, maybe you have one of those weird, ugly trinomials where there's like a number in front of your leading uh, term. I don't know. But what I see here is I notice that it says factor. I look at each term and I notice there's a five in common with all of these. So I can pull out a five. When you pull out a number, you divide that number from every term that's left over. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, invisible 1. n squared is there because I'm not removing any n's. Uh, 5 take, or divided from 10 is going to be 2. And since I didn't remove any n's, n stays behind. And 5 divided from tw 20 is 4, and there's no n's to worry about. Now I take a look at this, and to me that looks like one of those problems where I do sometimes. Think of two numbers that add up to 2 and two numbers that multiply out to 4. Well, let me tell you something. There aren't any. Uh, the only two numbers that multiply out to 4 are 1 and 4. 1 plus 4 is not 2. And 2 and 2, and 2 plus 2 is not 4. So we're done. Factoring in this case is just pull out a number. And that's all I had to do. Now, in this case, there's nothing that I can pull out. There's no number, at least, that I can pull out. There's no number in common with all three. And there's an M squared. There's an M. There's no M, so there's no M I can pull out. So this is a quadratic. And when you factor out a quadratic, you use a little acronym sometimes. Not acronym. I guess clever play on words sometimes, where you look for two numbers whose sum adding is 2 and whose times is negative 24. And then you set up two parentheses, and once you come up with those numbers, since m comes first, you just put them right there. Now, I'm going to have a positive... Sorry, I had to hit the freeze button there. Uh, I'm going to have a positive number and a negative number that I have to come up with. Why? Because if the two numbers that I have to times to get a negative is a negative, uh, then one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So I'm thinking 6 and 4. Now, is there a way I can combine a positive and a negative, 6 and 4, to make 2? Sure. If I add 6 and negative 4, those two guys add up to make positive 2 and multiply out to make negative 4. Why did I make the 6 positive and not negative? Because if they add up to 2, then I'm going to have the greater number be positive. So this is what I get when I factor it out. 
you can't do any more factoring. This is a single factor problem. I'm done. And if I wanted to, I can multiply and foil that out and double check my work, which I'm going to do in my head right now. I did. So I'm right. Good, good job by me. Okay. Quadratic again. No number to pull out, no letter to pull out. So we're going to set this up as a sometimes problem. I need two numbers that add up to invisible negative one. Mm -hmm. I need two numbers that add up to negative one and multiply out to 56, negative 56. So I have ends out front, one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. The only numbers that I can think of right now that multiply out to 56 off the top of my head are seven and eight, which is good because if they add up to negative one, seven and eight can combine to make a one or in our case, a negative one. So seven times eight is 56. 8 minus 7 is 1, but in this case, since this is a negative 1, the greater number is going to be negative. Negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. I'm done. I can't factor any more. That's it. Hmm. Now I'm taking a look at this and oh, I do have a number in front of n squared. And those of you who remember this chapter or this topic very well, you might be a little scared and say, oh, great, a number in front of n squared. This is going to be the worst day of my life. Sit tight. It may not be the worst day of your life. It might be one of them, but not the worst day of your life. Uh, that's a two, that's a six, and that's a negative 108, which means they're all even, which means factoring in this case means I can pull a two out of everything. So that leaves me with n squared plus 3n minus 54. Now, I factored, and the devil on your shoulder might be saying, you're done, you're done, you're done. But the angel on your shoulder that looks like me is like, ah, 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 look inside the parentheses. Can you factor any more? Yes, you can. Uh, I need to come up with two numbers whose sum, add, is 3 and whose times is 54. I do know that 6 and 9 multiply out to 54. And since this is negative, I'm going to need a positive and a negative. And 9 minus 6 is 3. I just got it. So the 2 is still out there, but these do factor out further. This guy factors out further, where if I have a positive 9 and a negative six, they multiply out to negative 54 and they add up nine and negative six to three. So I factored twice in this one. Dos, dos factoring. Hmm. Now, you might be looking at that and saying, uh, there's no n in common in both, and there's no number in common in both. You can't factor this. Oh, you forgot a little thing called difference of squares. Speaking of dos, if you have a square minus a square, there's a rule. And I do have a square minus a square. If you have an n squared minus 25, five squared, you have a difference of squares. You put your n's there because that's the square root of n. You make one of these positive, one of these negative, and you take the square root of that guy and plug them in there. And that's it. That's your difference of squares. And this makes sense because n times n, then squared. Then minus 5n, then plus 5n cancels each other out, and 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And that, ladies and uh, jelly spoons, uh, is going to be that one. Sorry, I had to check my phone. None of your business. Ugh. I'm not going to fret. There's also a little thing called perfect square trinomials. Remember in that one problem back there when I was like, you might think that this is a squaring type problem, but it's actually a foil. Same thing here. Perfect square trinomial says that if I were to take the square root of that guy and the square root of that guy, first off, can I take the square root of that guy? Yeah, I can. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 81 is 8, 9. Now, if I were to take 10x9 
multiply them together, 10 times x is 10x times 9 is 90x, and then multiply that to 2, 180x, do I get my interior or my inside term? Yes, I do. So these guys foil out to square root of 10, 100, 10. Square root of x squared, x. These are all positive, plus square root of 81, 9. That's a perfect square trinomial. If you could take the square root of the entire first term and the square root of the entire second term, multiply them together, multiply by 2, you get this middle guy, you can write it out like that. Now, if you didn't realize that, then you can do the problem uh, like we're going to do this one right here. These are the problems that ruins people's days. These are the problem that will ruin your day. So this is how I do it. Okay, this is the Nick Parrish method. I invented this method. If I don't become famous off of this method, then something went terribly wrong. And that something is probably my entire career trajectory. Uh, what you do is if you can factor out a number, and you have a quadratic, and you're being asked to factor a quadratic with a leading coefficient that is not 1. All right, you take that 2, and you write out all the possible combinations. And 2 times 1 is 2. You take this guy, and you write out all the possible combinations that multiply out to 2, but you just flip them. So 1 times 2, and 2 times 1. You have to write out all those combinations for this guy. Then what you do is you choose one. I'll choose you, Pikachu. Multiply the insides, 1 times 1. Multiply the outsides, 2 times 2. Add them together. And if you get that middle term, you got your numbers. So I did. So I multiplied the insides, got 1. I multiplied the outsides, got 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. Good. Now this is how I set it up. Okay. Here's your parentheses. 2 is the first guy attached to the n, so 2n. 1 is the second guy attached to the n, so 1n goes in the second parentheses. Positive 1 is the first guy not attached to an n, so plus 1. And 2 is the second guy not attached to an n, plus 2. I don't like that one there, so I'm just going to clean it up. 2n plus 1, regular n plus 2. Done. The Nick Parrish method. It's genius. It's genius. It's genius. Hmm. Uh can't factor out any number, can't factor out any letter, so I have to factor out the way we just did the Nick Parrish method. So I'm going to write out all the numbers that multiply out to 6. 6 times 1 is a possibility, 3 times 2 is a possibility. I'm going to multiply out all the numbers that multiply out to negative 49 along with their flipped versions. So I have 49 and I have negative 1. I have negative 49 and I have positive 1. I have negative 1 and 49. I have positive 1 and negative 49. I have 7 and negative 7. I have negative 7 and positive 7. Boom! Now my goal is to get a combination that adds up to 7. Why did that become a 1? Um... The 49s I'm a little hesitant of, although am I? Yeah, I'm hesitant of these 49s, so I'm going to try to make a, a seven, uh, uh, 7 combination. So let me try this. Let me try, let me try this one. Let me try it. So 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. So this gives me negative 7. So this tells me I'm on the right track. So let me try this guy because I'm on the right track. Okay, multiply the interiors. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. 
three times seven is positive 21. Those do add up to seven. That's my guy. Green is my guy. So let's set it up. Three is attached to X, three X. Two is the second guy attached to X, two X. Negative seven is the first guy not attached to X, negative seven. Positive seven, seven is the second guy not attached to X. There you have it. A portrait without its frame has a height, so let's draw a picture. A portrait without its frame. That's me. Uh, its height, a height five, one point five times its width. Okay. Its frame is four inches wide all along its perimeter. What does that mean? Four inches, it, its frame is four inches wide all along its perimeter. I guess it just means four inches wide. I, I don't know, that's weird. All along its perimeter. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't know why it brought up all along its perimeter. I'm going to leave it like that. What is an expression for the area of the framed portrait in terms of W? Okay, well, 1.5 W times 4 is 6 W. That's it. I'm sure I screwed that up. I'm sure I didn't do that right the way it's intended to, but I don't understand what it means. Its frame is four inches wide all along its perimeter. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm moving on. <laughs> uh, if 9px squared minus 6x plus 5 is rewritten as p squared, so I'm going to do that. Hold on, I got this. If uh, 9 x squared minus squared minus 6x plus 5 is rewritten as p squared uh, minus 2x p p plus 5. What is p in terms of x? Well, p if Okay, so I guess I can do it this way. P squared is the same as 9x squared, right? Square root that to get P, and P is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of x squared, which is x. That makes sense because negative 2 times P, which is now 3x, is negative 6x. Kind of weird problem, but I did it. Easier than the last one. <laughs> and speak of the devil, I just said easier than. And here we go with the crazy hard ones. I can do it. All right, so this is telling me to factor that guy right there. Uh, I'm looking at it. I notice that there are two ends in common in each. I notice that that is even, that's even, that's even. I can pull a four out of all of them, and I can pull an n squared out of all of them, so I will do just that. I'm gonna pull a four out, I'm gonna pull an n squared out. When I pull a four out, I divide them from those numbers. So I have seven n, seven, take two n's from four n's, and that's n squared, plus divide a four out of 16, and that's four, take two n's from three n's, and I'm left with just one n, divide a four out from negative 20, I'm sorry, negative 80, and that gives me negative 20, and uh, let me think, let me think, let me think, yeah, that's it. Now, I'm gonna have to use the Nick Parrish method on this guy, 
if it is even factorable. That's the worst part. What if it's not even factorable? Uh, the only ways, the only combinations that I can make to get seven or one and seven, or seven and one, doesn't really matter. A bunch here, a ton here. So I can do negative 20. I can do one. I can do negative one. I can do 20. I can do 20. I can do negative one, I can do negative 20, I can do one, I can do negative 10 and two, negative two and 10. I can do, oh, I already did this. Hold on, time out, time out, time out. I just repeated myself up here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I can do 10. Did I just freeze? I froze for a second there. I can do 10 and negative two. I can do two and negative 10. Uh, I can do five and negative four. I can do negative five and positive four. I can do four and negative five and I can do negative four and positive five. And I need four. Okay, I think it's it's it, um. Mm. I think the ten and two combinations are probably going to do it, because if I do like the ten and two combinations. Uh, that gives me, I think I just, I think I just figured it out. I think I just did one times 10 is 10. Seven, ugh, close. Seven times negative two is negative 14. So I'm on the right track. I, I, that gave me negative four. I need the positive four. So it's this one. It's gotta be this one. Well, hold on. It's gotta be the po the negative 10 positive two. I'm thinking it's that one. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. 7 times positive 2 is positive 14. That's the guy I won. All right, so I have 4n squared hanging out. Boom, 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 boom. 7 is the first thing attached to an n. 1 is the second thing attached to the n. Negative 10 is not attached to an n. Regular two is attached, not attached to an N. There you have it. For algebra one, it's pretty crazy hard. I don't disagree with my assessment. Last one, for what values of B is the expression factorable? All right, so we got plus signs, plus signs. Um, the numbers that multiply out to 12, okay. Uh, are 3 and 4, 1 and 12, and 6 and 2. So if I'm using sometimes, numbers that times out to 12 are 3 and 4. So B could be 7, 3 plus 4. B could be 13, 1 plus 12. And B could be 8. It's actually a lot friendlier than some of the regular basic easy ones but that's it that's a uh, topic seven factoring multiplying fun stuff we did it all in one take i'm proud of myself i did hit pause but only because i thought someone was walking into the room and i got scared and that's okay i'm not scared being with you though anybody who's watched this far again i think i'm just wasting my time making these videos it's okay at least i look good with my hat Thanks, everybody, for watching. Love you. Bye.